Hello, my name is Gordon. I'm one of the application engineers at uh, Census. I work for the sales department and today I would like to introduce to you one of our best-selling devices, the MXPDA system. Um, in this little presentation you will, will learn how uh, jelly beans are related to data density, what makes our MXPDA our best-selling device, what are the components of the system. I will introduce the software to you and finally you will learn something about the price. Viewers meet the MXPDA. MXPDA meet the viewers. This is our new MXPDA on the new gray type F card. In the background you see the big brothers of this system. The MXPDA system is designed to be a push card system and um, it comes in two dimensions. Uh, you can have the two meter wide um, device and if you remove the extensions you end up with a one meter wide device. The sensor spacing can be 25 centimeters or like in this case 50 centimeters. The MXPDA system is limited to five sensors. The first thing you will notice is the color. So we changed the color from green to gray, not because we ran out of green color. It is, um, we, we picked a brighter color, color in order to avoid thermal effects to the sensors. Another thing you will notice that the wheel base is wider than with the previous card. This is improving the stability of the whole card when you use it in a two meter wide arrangement. Many clients wished for another way to grab the card, which is why we changed the handles. Uh, before we had a bar that runs run across the, the card and you need to handle it like this. Now we changed it to the more convenient handles where it can walk like this. While the computer is the brain of the system, uh, the data acquisition unit is the heart. Here the sensors are connected as well as uh, the computer via a wireless connection and the GPS signals run here as well. This box is limited to five sensors. Another thing we changed or modified due to the requirements of our clients is the stand. In previous versions we had a just a simple stand so now we have a sophisticated and stable stand that you can operate just with a foot and two fingers. The GPS antenna is mounted to the antenna pole which is mounted to the sensor uh, tube that is in the center of the cart. Uh, of course you can use any other sensor tube to mount the antenna but by default it is mounted like this. The GPS antenna itself is connected via a cable to the data acquisition unit. We do not allow wireless connections due to the unpredictable delays in the signal. It is very important to synchronize the GPS data to the magnetic data very precisely. And in order to achieve this, we uh, created a little device. We call it Sync Agent and it's connected between the GPS antenna and the data acquisition unit and helps us to do a more precise um, synchronization between the different data types in that system. There are different ways to control the recording. The most old-fashioned one is that little button. So this was how we stopped and started the recording previously. So now you can use the touch screen or you can start and stop the recording automatically by using shapefiles. This is something I'm going to explain later in the software part. One common problem with the previous card was that the wheels tend to slide up in rough terrain. Well, we found a solution for that. We put some rings which we glued on the sensor tube and we modified the wheel clamps um, so that they cannot slide up anymore. Now that you know how the device is looking like and what components we use to build that device, I'm going to explain you what makes this uh, device that successful. 
One of the reasons why this device is heavily used in archaeology is the data point density. And how that is related to jelly beans will be next. This is the data point density of the MXPDA at regular walking speed. We achieve that narrow point distance by having a high separate of 100 hertz and a great bandwidth of the sensors. The sensor itself has been invented in 1936 in Germany. So the working principle of the sensor hasn't changed ever since. So what makes a device a great device, a device that everybody wants to use? We think it is the software. We created a powerful software with the name MonMX with a lot of features. And in order to run all of those features, we switched to a powerful computer. The software we use is called MonMX. It provides you a method to configure the device. Uh, it provides a live data display. So all the readings of the sensors will be displayed in real time. You will have a navigation display and a display of the covered area you surveyed already. One of the new features we recently added to the software is the long requested shapefile support. Before it was quite complicated to get shapefiles into the MonoMX software. Now it's quite simple, as you can see here. Once you have imported the shapefiles, they will be displayed in the navigation display. But you can hide them and make them visible again. Displaying the shapefiles in the navigation display for orientation is one option. Another one is to activate them. Once they are activated, they are able to control your recording. Controlling the recording means that every time you cross a shape line, the recording status will be triggered. If it's off, it will be switched on if you cross a line, and it will be switched off again if you cross another line. The same happens if you enter a polygon. Entering a polygon means that the recording will be started. If you leave the polygon, the recording will be stopped. But what if you haven't prepared any shapefiles in the office? That's easy. You just can select already measured tracks from a list and export them into a shapefile. You can decide whether or not you want to delete the old data and you can decide if you want to have a line or a polygon. I cannot get tired to explain all the nice features of the software for we had already two are about to come before we are talking about money. Another thing you can do with shapefiles, you can calculate or have the software calculate your surveyed area by calculating a survey boundary. Uh, you just export a survey boundary and a polygon will be created for you and the software will calculate the surveyed area. There are many more features I could talk about, but the last for today I want to mention is the extended MX mode. While the recording is interrupted when you lose the GPS quality or the GPS signal, um, the extended MX mode is providing help for that. In case of losing the GPS uh, connection, the recording will be continued and the coordinate will be interpolated between the last known and the first regained coordinate. We think that we've created a great device with the MXPDA. Uh, this is a combination of great software and a great hardware. And many clients are confirming our impression. You may wonder what the price of the device will be. And I can tell you, it is for free. No. Oh, wait, wait. No, it's not for free. Sorry, my bad. The prices range from 70,000 euro for a two-channel device up to 33,000 euro for a five-channel device. Both prices are without GPS. This concludes my little introduction of the MXPDA device. If there are any questions left, 
uh, please do not hesitate to contact me by any means you can imagine from telephone to fax, uh, LinkedIn, our website, and uh, what was the other thing? Mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, yeah, if you are not following on us on uh, social media, please do. And um, yeah, have a good time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.